Well, here we are. Are you ready for part three, which is the connection of the two units? Let's get started. All right, all right, all right. Today is connection day. We should have, we've got both units mounted and we finally have our coil in. First thing we'll do is take our connection wire and make sure that we do in fact have enough of it. Uh, because this is 25 foot, it should be very close. Maybe have, if I go as the crow flies, which I plan on doing, I should have a little bit of excess. Now, if you'll notice, we have one side of the coil, we have a little bit longer length, and that is on purpose because as, as you've seen, the indoor unit, one side's a little longer than the other, so they don't mount up in the same spot. Of course, there's the other side. A little disappointing with the with the iCool product here. It looks pretty beat up. Uh, shipping damage. I have some pictures. I don't know if I'll put them up, but a little bit of nicks like this. Sometimes something like this could be a could be a crushed part underneath that. The the tubing could be crushed. It may not be suitable for use. I may have to send it back. So we'll look at it, see what it does. We'll put the wire. Like I say, we'll put the wire in first. And from that, I should have some excess. Should give me a pretty good idea just how long it is uh, that I that I can trim off because I want to redo the two ends. Because normally, normally these are, are okay, but they're not the greatest. On not not their brand, but the pre-made uh, flares are usually pretty good, but not as good as what you can do yourself. Well, we've got our wire pulled through now. I want you to see just how gigantic that hole is it's a little more than necessary i think at least for the small unit you see we're almost banged up against top of the plastic this entire corner and of course at the bottom which can be a little bit of a problem so you might be able to get by with a smaller hole if you don't have to use a thimble because now we have this big giant hole we're going to fill that up with something and it's on the other side of this wall it's just one side because that's a crawl space. But here we have our wire. I've already got a, a connector here that will hold the, the SO cord, SOW, whatever it is. And we'll come through here. Let me pull my temporary off. And we feed it up as the instructions say up to there and to the terminals up on top, pretty much. All there is to it, then we button the side in. You need to uh, read your instructions, see how to take a corner of your unit apart. Alrighty then, you see the cable here? This has pin connectors. Do you see this? Terminal strip. Pin connectors, terminal strips. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. So we're gonna cut these off and replace them with, where did I do that? I've already lost it. I already got it, but I've got a a terminal that we'll put on here, put a little shrink tubing on it, and we'll go right up there. I'll show you in the next film edit. Okay, we now have our pin terminals replaced with a proper gauge and size of a fork, and they are soldered on then with shrink tubing on top of it. The ground UL likes to see a captured terminal it could be a ring or it could be one of the ones that have a little catcher so that if it loosens up it can't come out we're going to connect those and that's it put the sides on okay she's up and connected okay we are at a stage where i'm going to stop and take a break because it's hot out here it's going to get windy but uh i think i need some coffee so i'm going to get that down and you see we've got a line fed in we see we, now that i have verified what i thought i measured we're going to have enough with 25 feet of line. So what I'll do is go upstairs behind the wall and re-swage those connections so I know I'll get it done properly. Make sure I don't have any leak up it. Then I'll connect that side, finish tacking up the line, wrapping it up, and come down here cut the other end off to make up to the unit itself. It makes for a neater installation. The unit is pre-charged for 25 feet. I'm going to have less than that, so I know I'll be good there. And, of course, I've got to pull, still pull the vacuum and te leak test it before I, I open that valve. 
Hey, if you appreciate like this you watching. Content, do please me a go favor to call subscribe down to the channel, either the YouTube find or the Rumble channel, channel, which just appears and it'll open up a and page of QR can, codes. Check there the you can use your bell to scan to make, to make sure that you get page, notified or when you new can videos just mouse over and click it on the PC. It. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you. Thank you. Now we have the line in, and if you'll notice, it all runs gently downhill. Put a little light over in that area and it goes down so that there are no dips where the oil can migrate out except down there at the condensing unit well the lines have been cut and reswaged on both ends we had extra about three feet extra so that gets it one of the things you want to make sure that before you put the nut on that you get that flare mechanically centered on that joint on that end now wiring is done. It's just pretty well much, you know, matching the colors, black and red or black and white if you want. I mark mine red to show that it's not a neutral. And then black, white, red for the communication going up. And there's two grounds right there. Now let's look upside. I don't know who you it. Yep, so we just roll right over that top in that space, which was part of what was going to give me a little bit of fit with that structural member. See, it's coming down. It's going to really be behind this, which I, I probably could have made that work since I'm off of the wall a little bit. Wish you had now just to be belt and suspenders perfect, but uh, I believe that'll work. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but this is a blue fin. The fins are actually very close together, but they're actually coated with something to uh, help keep the um, oxidation down. Now I set the uh, unit down about two, three degrees, maybe four, just ran it down to make sure it was running. And it's running, can you hear it? It's quiet, very quiet. Well, it is running. That's not the air pushing it. Not making much noise it is a variable and we have it installed well that's where it's going to rock and roll now in this you see at the final i have a little bit of an oil trap at the bottom of the line you may not want to do that i'm not recommending that you do that it may actually kill the unit although that's not what it's intended to do the loops are a little bit deeper than I would have really liked. It didn't look that, that deep on the ladder. And I did want a little bit of a loop just to catch for low flow migration out. As you can see from the lines, if you watch the video up to this point, you see that we had some dramatic fallback to it, which it should return all the oil to that. Now, if it fills up like a P-trap on a sink, when it runs, it's going to pull that oil back in and push it up toward the line, clear out the line. And it increases the velocity in that little loop right where that oil would be, which is the whole point to get it to pick up that oil and to recirculate it through. However, the instruction diagram does show it leaning downhill toward the valve, which will run any kind of water and sweat right up on that brass into the unit on the side of it, rust the unit a little bit. Rust is not a bad thing necessarily for the life of the unit, but the idea is to give a little bit of a rain drip as well. Although I could have a rain drip a little shorter than that and still manage to get it not to run on the valves. So we'll see as time goes on whether or not I put too much of a trap in it and we'll see how well it holds up. Now this thing seems to be extremely efficient and running on a very low flow anyway. As long as we don't drain the compressor, we should be okay. But then again, that's part of it. If it were to drain enough oil to catch in those little lines, it's going to blow it and pick it back up and carry it. So it should be okay. That's the theory. I used to design blast chillers and refrigeration. Worked at a company that made rack systems for grocery stores, although I did the electrical, not the refrigeration. And we'll find out how well it works. If it doesn't, I'll be getting a new condensing unit. And that's the more expensive of the two. Now, in my example, because I didn't want a do-it-yourself thing, we did trim the lines, we did have to pull a vacuum, and I did re-swage each of the flares to make sure they were good. I also wanted to make sure I had a good head-to-head -head union of the flare to the fitting 
and that's necessary to get a good fit to keep it from leaking. So I hope this video is being useful to you. I would recommend following all stated and printed instruction that your unit has, or you might void the warranty. And that's the end of the show. Appreciate it.